As we record this, the IRS announces it is probing a story from ProPublica, which is a publicly funded journalism enterprise, because ProPublica has unmasked personal tax records of some of the wealthiest people in the United States. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and that's not the topic of this episode of Right Angle, but it is connected. The New York Times picked up on ProPublica's story and ran a story about how billionaires are managing to make billions of dollars and pay virtually no taxes. Uh, to be more accurate, between 2014 and 2018, gentlemen, uh, some the top 25 wealthiest Americans generated some $401 billion in wealth, but only paid something like $13.6 billion in income taxes. And uh, in some cases with Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and Warren Buffett, they paid little to no taxes. And so the point of the story is basically laying the groundwork for the Biden administration's efforts to foot the bill for some, last I heard, $6 trillion in new spending that they've generated. Uh, be, by making the case that rich people should be paying more in taxes. There are already proposals from the Biden administration to increase the capital gains tax rate, uh, to take away a benefit that people have enjoyed when passing wealth on to their children about how it establishes the value of that wealth and how it is taxed uh, so that those children inheriting wealth will be taxed. That would be especially difficult for farm families. And Elizabeth Warren is talking about something that uh, that the Biden administration has not yet gotten on board with, which is having a essentially a 2% wealth tax where they would tax you not on your income or money that's generated in a particular year, but on your overall wealth. All of that discussion about how do we get all the money to pay for all the spending we want to do provides the foundation for this story. And uh, Stephen Green, um, the, the question is always raised among conservatives or the, or the complaint or accusation is made among conservatives is if you slam rich people with higher taxes, well, they, they just won't do what rich people do, which was generate growth and productivity for the country. So, so you're actually shooting yourself in the foot if you want to increase taxes uh, to public coffers. Um, this statement that billionaires should not be allowed to take advantage of what the New York Times calls the vagaries of the tax code uh, or <laughs> loopholes in the tax code um, gives a lot of people the impression that, you know, there are these greedy Scrooge McDuck kind of characters who are just trying to rich, rip people off and are somehow doing something that is unethical, even though Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett are abiding by the law. Oh, my. If, I, if, I, if I'm thinking of the same story, uh, ProPublica somehow got a hold of uh, these uh, tax records from a leaker. So all of this somehow. information is obtained completely illegally. Uh, this is people's private tax stuff. It's not my business, not their business. It's between these people and Uncle Sam. Uh, I just want to say that. Uh, I want to start off, though, by saying that when it comes to paying taxes, uh, I'm a lot like Mr. Pink and Reservoir Dogs and how he tips waitresses. You know, if at the end of the year, I think the government has done a really good job, really gone out of their way to, to, to do some great service, I'll give them two, maybe three percent. I, I, I think maybe we should all take that attitude. Um, slightly more seriously, this is normally where I would come out and, uh, and defend these guys. Um, our tax code is absolute crap. It punishes things that shouldn't be punished. It rewards things that shouldn't be rewarded. Um, it's just, it's, it's a crappy tax code. And uh, the fact of the matter is, though, that when it comes to a lot of these guys, I'm, I'm just, I'm done defending them. And it isn't because I don't think they're paying their fair share, because what I'd really like to see is the fair tax enacted, do away with the income tax completely repeal the 16th Amendment and go to a consumption based tax where if you want to spend like a billionaire, you're going to get taxed like a billionaire right there at the cash register. I'm a big supporter of the fair tax. But you know what? So many of these billionaires, it's it's not that they're following the tax code or not following the tax code. It's not whether or not they pay what I think is their fair share. It's that they hate me. 
They don't like this country. That's it. They don't like this country. They don't believe in its founding principles. They don't think very much at all of their own customers, their own shareholders, or any of the rest of it. So you know what? Kind of screw these guys. If ProPublica wants to break the law and leak these tax record tax records and embarrass them, fine. Go ahead. I'm done. I wash my hands of you. You want to start defending this country that I believe in. I'll start defending you. Until then, pff, you get whatever you get. Now, Bill Whittle, that's an interesting approach that our colleague Stephen Green has taken um, because we have a tendency to look at things and try to depersonalize them and say, let's look at the principles. Let's look at the values involved in this. And, you know, forget about the fact that Warren Buffett has said that rich people should be taxed more while paying an army of tax accountants to make sure that he's not taxed more um, while not disobeying any laws in the process of doing that. Uh, what do you think of this idea of um, the people who have the means to do so, taking advantage of the legal methods that they are allowed to employ to pay as little tax as possible? Shouldn't everybody be trying to do this? Yes, and everybody does try to do it. And the difference between conservatives and progressives is conservatives say we should be paying as little tax as possible. Progressives are saying we should be paying as much tax as possible, and then both sides go out and try to pay as little tax as possible. This is the fundamental difference between progressives and conservatives. We get to say one thing and then do the same thing. Um, it's actually kind of ties together nicely with what Steve was saying about the quality of, of, of some of these billionaires. You know, when you're, when you're dealing with people whose entire uh, – strategy for their vast amount of money is to reduce freedom and Jeff Bezos and and, and um, Zuckerberg and all the rest doing everything they can to influence elections, everything they can to censor free speech, all of these, Google, all, all of it. They're not friends of the republic in the way that some of these titans of industry, you could, could make the claim that the guys who are made their fortunes off of General Motors, for example, also built the vehicles that won World War II. You know, they, they're doing something for the country and they're contributing to the country. These guys, not so much. And and this brings us back to kind of an interesting little personal anecdote about, about this, because when you were given these numbers, uh, rough numbers, you said there's 400 billion in earnings and roughly one point and roughly 14 billion in taxes. I did a video many years ago called uh, Eat the Rich. Uh, and it was based on some research that our friend Iowa Hawk did which I certainly gave him credit for at the beginning and the end of the video. But in round numbers, the United States government, at least four or five years ago, it's probably more now, but in round numbers, the U.S. government spends $10 billion a day. So what this means is, is that the total amount of taxes that billionaires have paid, that $14.5 billion, would run the country for a day and a half. All the money that, the, all the money that they've paid in taxes would run the, money, would run the country for a day and a half, but... If you were to take all the money they made, if you would take their total net worth, then you'd run the country for 40 days out of the 365 days that we have during the calendar year. So yes, right now they're running the country spending for a day and a half. And if we took everything they'd have, they'd be covering 40 days, but we'd still have 320 days. 325 days of spending $10 billion a day. That's after we take every single penny that these ultra rich have. So as Steve pointed out in our backstage show, we don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. And when it comes to the quality of these billionaires, I'll just come out and say something that's been bothering you for a long time. I did that video and it did pretty well. And a year or two after that, Tony Robbins came out and did the exact same video using the exact same graphics and the exact same language. He, he, somebody had said, Tony Robbins has stolen your video. I thought, oh, he probably just used the arguments, which is why they're out there. No, 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 no. I mean, absolutely one-to-one -one copy. And Tony Robbins makes more money than I do. So in this particular case... I'm not inclined to want to give somebody like that the benefit of the doubt. But when all of this nonsense is said and done, Steve is absolutely right. There's only one fair way to pay for this, and that is to have everybody pay the same percentage and have it be volitional. In other words, you get to decide how much money you want to pay in taxes because you get to decide how much you want to buy. It's just that simple. If you want to take wealth away from billionaires more than you want to take it away from the middle class and more from the middle class than you do from poor people, then tax on, on what they buy. 
rich people buy more expensive things than poor people do. And, and, and then you get to decide, you don't want to buy anything, you don't pay any taxes. That's how it goes. All of this is, is, is real simple, but ultimately, like, a, like Steve said in the backstage show, this is not, this is not a, a question about virtue. It's not a question about fairness. It's a question about feeding an addiction on spending that is absolutely beyond this government's ability to control. If they were to find a way to, to take the $4 trillion or $5 trillion a year that we spend from rich people only, do you think that means they would drop the income tax on the rest of us? Because I don't <laughs> think they would. Okay, so, so it's not about us versus the rich. It's about it's about the people versus this government and this idea that the that the that the money we make, which is the result, when we say that this is the fruit of our labor, that is a, a much too simple a term. If I work for twenty years and save money to try and buy a house, they haven't just taken. I haven't just spent my labor in exchange for that money. That is my life. I don't get those twenty years back. Those are twenty years of my life. Twenty years I didn't spend with my family. Twenty years I didn't get to do other things. Twenty years or forty years of my life went into earning this money, earning it, exchanging it for forty years of my life, half. And the idea that somebody in Washington is entitled to all of that because that's how they feel. They only charge what they think they can get away with, but they feel in their guts, they feel like this is their money and it's not their money. And it's about time somebody made this clear to them. Robert Kiyosaki in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and a avalanche of other books related to Rich Dad, Poor Dad that came out after that. And that started about 20, almost 25 years ago now, uh, talks about the U.S. tax code in a way I'd never heard anybody else talk about it. Because typically, if you hang out among conservatives, the tax code is referred to as this terrible system where the federal government is basically trying to milk every last dollar you have. And like Bill said, they, they feel entitled to it. Um, Kiyosaki and some of the consultants that have worked, uh, written books with him uh, basically say that the U.S. tax code is actually the government's way of getting people to do things that make for a successful country. For example, it's it, it rewards people who buy houses and uh, especially investors who buy multiple houses. It rewards people who start companies. It rewards people who are investors and are willing to risk their own capital by putting it into either their own company or someone else's enterprise. All uh, uh, Most of the tax code is really a system of rewards for people who will do things that the government wants to have done because overall, if people do more of that, then there'll be more tax dollars. <laughs> for the government. Um, Kiyosaki talks about the what he calls the cash flow quadrant and how uh, most of us grow up in this idea that we are to get a good job, you know, go to college, get a good job and earn an income. Uh, if you're on the uh, regular employee side of the ledger, or if you're a doctor or a dentist or an attorney or something like that, and you're in the solo entrepreneur side of the, of the quadrant, that's the worst possible place to be for tax purposes. You want to be on the side where you're either owning and running a, a significant business or you're an investor and the government incentivizes that. Um, so for years, I've been thinking in terms of just complaining about how the government does everything. It never occurred to me that what Jeff Bezos does and Elon Musk does and Warren Buffett does is actually obey the same law that I could obey. It's available to me as well. You do, I could be upset with the fact that they're making billions and not paying as much in taxes, or I could look at it and say, let's see, this is, and, and by the way, these numbers I'm sure are wrong and not up to date because I couldn't get the full extent of them. But when I asked the internet, how many people does Berkshire Hathaway uh, employ? Berkshire Hathaway is Warren Buffett's company. Berkshire Hathaway, as of 2015, they had 361,270 employees. How many employees does Elon Musk have at Tesla? I'm sure this number is bigger than this now, but it was about 50,000. How many employees does Elon Musk have at SpaceX? About 6,000. And of course, it's more than that now. I don't know about the Boring Company or any other or, uh, enterprise that Elon Musk is involved in, and I'm sure I'm missing numbers numbers here. How many employees does Jeff Bezos have? At Blue Origin, about 2,000. There are some seven or 800 people in the newsroom at the Washington Post, which Bezos also owns. And Amazon.com, at least with these figures, had almost 1.3 million 
employees. Now, what those three men have done is created enterprises that employ thousands upon thousands, even millions of people in this country, all of whom are able to engage in some form of productive labor that increases the GDP of the country, that broadens the tax base of the country, and that makes it possible for Joe Biden's administration to spend $6 trillion that it doesn't have because it can burden the grandchildren who are also going to be working for Amazon and Tesla and SpaceX probably on Mars. Um, this, I, I, I did this whole episode because I think sometimes conservatives need to reconfigure our thinking and say, hey, wait a minute, instead of complaining about the rules of the game, why don't we actually play the game we say we believe in? Instead of just mouthing the platitudes of free market capitalism, why don't we actually engage in it? Instead of griping about how I'm being taxed at the highest possible level because I'm a W-2 employee, why don't I invest in real estate? Why don't I start a business? Why don't I set up an LLC? Why don't I do something that would actually comport with what the government is trying to accomplish so that the whole society will prosper as a result of that? Remember, all these tax laws were written by the people we sent to Washington, D.C. You could say there's something wrong with them, and there's probably a lot wrong with them. But instead of griping and whining and complaining about it, why don't we take the lesson of Elon Musk and say, you know what? I don't wanna pay taxes. How would I have to structure my life so that I don't have to pay federal income taxes? And how can I do that legally? I, I am actually in favor of this idea and I don't have to defend these guys. They're big boys, they can take care of themselves. But I think if one guy is able to create an enterprise that employs 1.3 million people, and then we're whining that he doesn't pay enough in federal income taxes personally, I think there are better things to complain about. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible.